Hi, in this lesson, we're going to introduce you to the gravity simulation that you're going to help build. But first, what are simulations? Why are they helpful? And why do we use them? Let's take a look at one of the simulations that was in your last exercise, the spring simulation. First of all, I think it's easy to see that this simulation is representing a real-life situation, hanging a weight on a spring. So, simulations or models represent a real-life situation. The key point is that they represent something. They aren't exactly that thing. Sometimes simulations will simplify the scenario in order to focus on a particular aspect. For example, if I pull down on this spring and let it go, it will keep going up and down forever. That's because they programmed it to have no friction, so it will never stop moving. This would never happen in real life, but it's okay to have it happen in a simulation. In fact, simulations are great because they can allow us to see things or change things that would otherwise be very difficult to do in real life like having no friction in the spring, or being able to change things like the strength of the spring, or even the strength of the gravity acting on the spring, which of course would be impossible to do in the classroom. In this course, you are going to help create a gravity simulation that allows you to see how different planets or stars interact with each other under the influence of their gravitational poles. To do this, you're going to be using the programming language called JavaScript. JavaScript is a very popular programming language right now. It's the only language native to your web browser, and it makes applications interactive and dynamic. With this functionality, it's often used in web, game, and mobile app development. Let's jump into the CodeHS code editor to see this in action. Then we'll come back and review some of the major concepts discussed. In the CodeHS editor, we're going to have some starter code in our program. It'll be at the bottom of the program. And you don't need to worry too much about the starter code. Just make sure that you leave it there and intact. It basically will allow us to call on two functions, the create background function and our create planet function. And this will make it a lot easier for us to set up our simulation. So let's go back up to the top of our program. And we're going to use uh, some statements to call on those functions and set up our simulation. First, what we'll do is create a colored background. And we'll do that by calling on the create background function. And let's make it the color black. And this will be sort of like our space environment. Then when we run our code, we'll have a black background on our canvas in the graphics environment. Now let's create some planets. We're going to start by creating one planet, a new planet. And we'll call on that planet function. And the cool thing about that function is we can use some arguments. We can pass some arguments to it. For instance, the x and y coordinates, where we want the planet to be positioned, the mass, radius of the planet, and its color. We'll need to set this up by creating a variable called planet1 that will equal that new planet. And we'll call on the planet function, and we'll put it at position 100, 100. Those will be our x and y coordinates. And we'll give it a mass of 100,000. That's not too important at the moment. A radius of 30, and we'll make it the color red. And when we run our program, sure enough, there's our red planet on our background. So now let's create a second planet using that planet function again. We'll set up another variable. We'll call this one planet2 and create a new planet. Call on the planet function. We'll put this at 300, 300. Those will be our x and y coordinates. And we'll give it a different mass, a different radius. And we'll give it the color green. And then when we run our program, sure enough, we have two planets in our simulated environment. Functions are commands that tell the computer to do something. They have a name, like create background and planet, parentheses, and when using them, will end with a semicolon. They also sometimes have inputs, which are values that you provide when using the functions. In JavaScript, call these inputs arguments. Most functions will have an output 
Create Background changes the color of the canvas, and Planet creates a new planet, which is why you also need the keyword New. We won't go into too much detail here, but essentially these planets are an example of JavaScript objects that the computer can understand. Because we want to be able to use these objects throughout our program, we store them in what we call variables. A variable is like a box with a name that holds a value to be used throughout a program. In the example below, the name of variable is planet1. And with the equals sign, we store our planet object as the value. In order to create the variable in JavaScript, we need to use the keyword var right before the variable name. Now that we have the variable called planet1 storing our planet object, we can use it throughout the program to do things to our new planet. Now it's your turn to use the functions and create new planet variables.